everyone, welcome back to another video. Today we're gonna talk about how to put colors together when we're creating color combinations. I have been, well most of you know, I've been doing private coloring classes and I have found over the last couple months since I've started doing these classes that one of the biggest things that so many of you struggle with is putting your colors together and creating color combinations that are really going to pop have a little bit of contrast between the colors and being able to create those dark drastic shadows that we really need to make our objects on our coloring pages really really pop and in this video i'm going to show you a few different color combinations that i've already put together over here and then i am also going to show you an example in a coloring book i just finished one of my classes and we were working on um, putting together a color combination so that we could color some shingles on a well in the Secret Garden coloring book. And a color combination was put together by the person taking my class and it was wonderful and so I wanted to be able to share it with all of you and really be able to bring it to a video and explain to you why this color combination was so perfect and it turned out really really good and I'll show you exactly in the book what I was teaching in the class so that y'all can maybe practice it yourself but I wanted to be able to have this video so that I can refer those of you that are taking my private coloring classes to this video so that you understand why this is so important and I wanted this video out there for everyone else as well so that you are not struggling anymore putting your colors together. So that's what we're going to do in this video today. This sheet here is actually part of my bundle that I have available in my Etsy store. I created a workbook that is actually a full tutorial workbook that has lots of diagrams and then worksheets for you to be able to practice putting your colors together and create color combinations and the bundle also has this worksheet this is the three color blend or three blend color combination worksheet when i created the bundle of the workbook i added color combinations from three blend color combinations all the way to 10 so it starts out very beginner and then it shows you in the workbook how to add the colors in at the transitions and create as many colors as you or put together as many colors as you would like to to be able to bring all of those to your coloring pages and I've seen lots of you using these worksheets and showing what you've come up with in my Facebook group and I really really love it if you check the description box down below I will make sure I have the links down there for my Etsy store where you can find the color combination and blending tutorial workbook as well as the one where it is bundled where you can also get all of these uh, color combination worksheets from three color blends all the way to 10. You can also purchase this separate or you can purchase it as a bundle. Let's go ahead and get into this video. Let's go ahead and start this video off by I'm going to show you some of the color combinations that I've created. I've got three different ones here. This isn't really a color combination video, but I've got three to show you, and I will have more color combination videos coming, but I really wanted to touch on in this video why the choosing of your colors is so important. So when you're choosing a color combination, you need to make sure when you put your colors together, when you're choosing your colors, that you have a color that is very, very dark, and then you have your mid-tone, and then you've got your highlight, which is very, very light. And I always like to make sure that there is a pretty big difference in the values of my colors. So let me go ahead and show you a few that I have, um, that I pulled together here. So I have, for the first one, I have dark green. And so I'm just going to lay this color down here. And when you are laying your colors down and you're creating your color combinations, this is one of the other things that um, a lot of people in my classes are really struggling with because they're laying the colors down and they're ending up with a very harsh line here at their transition. So when you're laying your colors down, it's okay to come up here and use harder pressure at the top but as you come down to that transition line, which would be right about here, see in this case I'm laying down three colors. So when I come down towards a transition, I wanna lift up the pressure on my pencil just a little bit. 
And then I'm going to come in with my mid-tone, which in this case, it's going to be apple green. Now notice there is a huge difference in these two colors, and that is the whole objective when you're putting together your colors. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to color this in at the transition line using a little bit harder pressure. And then I'm going to come down and I'm going to lift off the pressure of my pencil just a little bit so that when I come in with that color that is much lighter, I am going to be able to start above that transition line, fill that in, and combine those colors together as I pull it down and give it its own space. So this is what I've been having to go over in a lot of my classes, and so I really wanted to make this video so that some of those that are in my classes have a video to refer to, and that it is also out there for the rest of you. A lot of what I'm showing you today is what I've taught you in my color combination and blending tutorial workbook that is available in my Etsy store. And then I'm gonna come back and I'm just going to lay this color down going the opposite direction, and again, lifting up a little bit when I come into that transition line. And at the transition line, you should see the colors just coming together. So it's going to create a different color because you're blending those colors together at your transition line and you just want it to be a very smooth transition. You don't want to see that harsh line there and that's why you're going to pull up as you come into your next color because when you're putting only three colors together before you come in and add more colors at that transition to create even more or a bigger color combination, you're going to have a bigger um, difference in the values of the colors and you want those colors to blend together really really nicely so to really make it come together you would just keep coming back and doing the same thing so I'm going to come back and I'm going to start at that transition line and come back down and pull it into this next color and I can't remember if I said but this is yellow chartreuse and I'm just going to pull this down into its own space so each one of my colors now has their own space in my uh, color combination. And if I wanted to bring this to a leaf or something in a coloring book, I can do so. Then I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to write down what these colors are. So I have dark green. So we'll go ahead and fill that in. And then I think I had spring green. Oh no, this is actually apple green. I probably said it was spring green. I apologize. So this is apple green. And then I have yellow chartreuse, which is one of my absolute favorite highlight colors. So I came back and I just went opposite directions again. And I really just blended this as thoroughly as I possibly could and it came together really really nicely i love those colors together but if you look at this you can see that this color is much much darker and then my mid-tone is much lighter than my color i'm going to use for my shadows and then when i come down here i've got my pop of color and this is what is going to help if i'm if i'm coloring a leaf on a coloring page this is what's going to help me to really make that object on my coloring page have that pop i'm looking for and the shadowing color that I'm using is really going to help to lift that object off the page and create all that depth and dimension that we're looking for. So let me go ahead and show you one more color combination. Well, I've got two more actually, but I wanna show you again another example and you could see how the difference in the values of the colors are very, very different when I am using or when I'm choosing my uh, darkest color and then my midtone and my highlight. So here, I have indigo blue. And so when I'm laying down this color, I could go a little harder pressure with my pencil. And then as I come down, I'm gonna lift up. So do you see how it's much darker up here? And then as I come down, I'm lifting up just a little bit so that I could bring in my mid-tone and I could pick up right at that transition and blend those colors together using a little bit harder pressure and then pull it down into its own space. And I really love those two colors together. Look how pretty that is. And now when I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna add a much lighter color, I really want to be able to lift up on the pressure in my pencil, creating this um, much lighter color so that we could form the gradient that we're looking for. So now I have sky light blue, or sky blue light. Is that, yeah, sky blue light. So this one was indigo blue. This one here is blue slate, which I absolutely love. And then of course, this one is the sky blue light. But you could see how the transition is very, very smooth because I lift it up on my pencil or the pressure that I'm putting behind my pencil just a little bit 
So I'm going to do the same thing and come back with my indigo and I'm going to pull this color down into the transition area where I'm going to come back with that blue slate and come right above where I want to start that color to blend those colors together very nicely so that they're actually creating another color here at the transition area, giving it a much smoother transition. So, and then I'm going to come down and pull this color into my lightest color. And then I'm going to come back and I'm going to do the same thing with my uh, sky blue light. Now you could tell that a lot of the uh, white of the paper is still left. So you could come back and go the opposite direction. Again, lift up just a little bit as you come into that transition area. And again, this is the Spring Hill paper. I know I always, always tell you all that, but then I still always have questions about what paper are you using? I always use the Spring Hill paper, the 80 pound Spring Hill paper. I absolutely love, love, love this paper. It, is, it works so nicely with your uh, colored pencils, with most all colored pencils that I've tried on it. And it just really helps to grab and hold on to that wax in the pen, in the, um, you know, from your pencil and, you know, pull it into the tooth of the paper. And as you come back and you lay more layers, it just really makes everything come together so, so nicely as you're filling the white of the paper. And then you could come in and if you wanted to, I could go over this whole thing and burnish it with this lightest color to really fill in a whole lot more of that white. But for the sake of this video, I'm not gonna do that because I'm trying to save on time and I wanna be able to show you an example as well in the Secret Garden coloring book. And so let's go ahead and just fill some of these in. So I've got indigo blue and then this one was blue slate. And then this last one was sky blue light. This sky blue light out of all the light blues in the Prismacolor set, it is my absolute favorite. If you look at your blues, I think we've got in the Prismacolor set, we've got cloud blue, then we got the sky blue light and then we have powder blue. And that sky blue light is the one that really just adds that pop for me when I'm coloring something on my coloring pages because it is much brighter and the other two are a little bit more muted. If you lay them all right out next to one another, you could see the difference in the shades. And this one is always just the brightest one. It's beautiful. And I think it's also the lightest one if I remember correctly. But let's go ahead and do one more. And I'm gonna show you the one that was chosen by the person that was taking my class this morning. And she put this color combination together with a little bit of help from me. And I think I helped her with the um, highlight color because I think she was a little bit hesitant to really go that light. And so I wanna show y'all how this just really works so well because this color combination came together and it was so beautiful. Of course, she didn't. Ha she only had the 72 set, so she couldn't use the color that I'm about to show you. So she had to substitute with one of her Holbeins, but I matched up the Holbein and it came together really nicely. So the first color that I have is Tuscan Red. And so I'm gonna do the same thing here. I'm using a little bit harder pressure and then I'm gonna lift the pressure as I come down into that mid-tone area. And then my next color that I have is Crimson Lake. And so I'm gonna come over where those colors are transitioning and I'm gonna pull this down and you can see that I'm really lightening up on the pressure of my pencil so that I could come in with my highlight color. And in this case, there's a huge difference in these two colors. When you see it, you'll see why. <laughs> but there's a huge difference in these two colors and so it is very important in this case to do that. So I have eggshell and look how gorgeous this is. Look how beautiful that is when I add that color in there. And I'm gonna show you an example in a coloring page after I finished putting this color combination together. Now let me come back the other direction. So as I pull this down into where the Scarlet Lake has its own place, I am going to lighten up on the pressure of my pencil as I blend those two colors together. So now I'm gonna come back with the Crimson Lake. I said Scarlet Lake. Okay, so this is Crimson Lake. I said the name wrong. <laughs> But when I come back in with the Crimson Lake, I'm going to come in at this transition and really blend those colors together using harder pressure. And then I really have to lighten up in this case because there is a huge difference from the value in this color to the value in this color. I'm gonna come in here at this transition area and I'm really gonna try to blend these out as much as I possibly can using harder pressure. And then I'm gonna pull this eggshell down into its own 
space. So you can see how each color has its own space in my color combination, and when I bring it to my coloring page, I want to be able to do the same thing because that's how you create all the extra depth and the dimension. Each color has its own space. Now if you wanted to create a whole nother color, you can mix all of these colors together, but if you do that, you're going to create a whole new color. And I've seen a lot of people coming to classes doing exactly that, and they're not understanding why they are not able to create all that extra depth and dimension that's just going to make your object really pop off your page and focus on creating separation when you have two objects that are very close to one another. So I've seen a lot of that, and so that's really why I wanted to be able to make this video. And now I'm going, well, let me go ahead and first write these down in here and make sure that since I've said them wrong so many times, I actually write them down right. <laughs> so this was Tuscan Red and then Crimson Lake. And the value between these two, two colors, it's not that drastic, but the way that it comes together is so beautiful just because this one has a different tone to it than the Tuscan Red does, and it just all comes together so beautifully. And if I wanted to take this eggshell color here and put it more over this um, Crimson Lake, it actually creates a beautiful color. You could see that here, right in this transition area, how pretty that color is. It turns it to a sort of um, pink color, and it is absolutely beautiful. So when you're putting together these color combinations, or in this case where you have this transition area it almost looks like I used four colors because these two colors blended together and made the most beautiful color once they came together. So this is Secret Garden by Joanna Basford and this book was picked out or chosen by the student that was taking my coloring classes this morning and this there was a page in here that she really wanted to color and it was this page with this well because she wanted to learn how to color these shingles and how to do the stone and so we are learning that in class now but she put together the color combination like I said with a little bit of help from me because I think she was really a little bit fearful to add in a color like that eggshell and when I steered her in that direction she was like oh that's gonna come you know like she was really questioning it a little bit but that is how you are going to create that pop and elevate the objects off of your coloring pages and create the separation like in this case we were doing shingles let me zoom you in just a little bit so if you look at these shingles here this was what I demonstrated to her in class this morning and if you look at these shingles you can see that like over here, this is the color combination that I showed you just a few minutes ago. But um, if you look here, you can see that I focused on creating um, separation between each one of these shingles on the well. And I also made sure that to do that, Wherever I laid my darkest color, like if you look right here, you could see that I added a lot of the Tuscan Red. And so I really wanted to emphasize that separation. And so to do that, I added a little bit of that eggshell in there, and then I went off with the eggshell into the um, Crimson Lake. So then in this shingle, I used much more of my darkest color, which was the Tuscan Red, and I made sure I kept the darkest color over here so that there's a separation between these two shingles. And as I come through and I do all of the shingles on the top of this well, I'm going to make sure that I do that all the way through. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna color a couple of these shingles so y'all can see how this is done as well. Okay, so I just wanna mention now, if you look at this one down here, you could see that these shingles here are laying over this shingle here, and that's the look that I wanna create on my coloring page. So I laid a whole lot of my Tuscan Red right under this line here, and then I just pulled the colors down. So I'm gonna continue what it was that I was doing on all of these. Like if you look over here, I've got some eggshell right here on this side because I used my darkest colors over here. And so if you look at this, you could tell they're sort of being elevated from the page. That's what you're trying to accomplish when you're doing something like this. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna show you how I did this. So I'm gonna start with my Tuscan Red and I'm gonna add this color down up under here. 
and you could see the color that is just above it I've got a lot of I used a little bit of the white of the paper and I got my eggshell over here and then over here I've got a lot of the lighter color and when I put the um, the Tuscan red right here I did not pull it all the way down I came in with my um, Crimson Lake and I pulled it out just a little bit but I did not come all the way to the bottom because again wherever I have this darkest color especially when I'm only using three colors I don't want my darkest color to be here and then my darkest color also to be here because if I do that I'm actually losing that separation between the shingles so I just am going to come down here just a little bit and I'm going to put this just in the corner and then I'm going to grab my crimson lake and I'm going to pull that in and I'm using the same idea that I used when I showed you how to put the colors together on the um, on the color combination worksheet. So on this one, for instance, I've got a lot of light colors over here. So if I wanted to, I could actually take this one and add some more dark over here. And I'm just trying to make each shingle look a little bit different. So I'm coming in with my darkest color and I'm really going to emphasize that line. But then I need to come back with my mid-tone and I need to pull that out just a little bit. Now I already know that when I come down here I'm going to be using the darkest color. So I want to make sure that I keep these shingles having the lightest color down at the bottom. And you can see how this eggshell is just really creating the, the look that I'm going for where I want to just really make it just pop off the page. And I'm going over all of the colors and just bringing them together and I'm pulling those colors down into this highlight color. But do you see how that just creates the look that they are just popping off the page? Now I could come back and I could keep working on this and laying down more layers and as I come back and I lay down more layers, it's going to create more and more shadow. But isn't that the coolest thing ever? I've seen so many that are coming to my classes and they're just really struggling with this. And I just really wanted to have this video out there so that I don't um, spend so much of their class time going over this again and again. And this way I have a, re a video to refer everyone to. And I know that there's so many videos on my channel now and so a lot of the videos just kind of get lost. And I've had a lot of people saying, have you done a video on this? And I'll be like, I have one on that. <laughs> and so I find myself constantly linking to videos. So I figured that this would be a really good refresher too because I know I've covered this in a lot of different videos where I have focused on just color combinations, but I've not showed you or well I've showed you in separate videos how to bring it to a coloring or uh, bring it to a coloring book but I've never I don't think done a video where I explained it this in depth and also brought it to a coloring book in the same video so I just uh, and after class this morning I just was like when we put together this color combination I was like wow this is perfect and I had already planned out this video but after the class this morning, I was like, well, this will be perfect to use for the video that I am trying to put together because I was still in the mid middle of scripting out my entire video and trying to decide what I wanted it for it and doing the class this morning just really brought it all together. So you can see here in this one that we've got this leaf laying over the top of the shingle. So you would have to assume that there is going to be a lot more shadow in that area. So when I color this shingle, I'm doing it a little bit different than the others. And I'm going to bring down my mid-tone just even a little bit more on this one. And I'm going to focus on putting my eggshell over here. So again, eggshell is my highlight color. And I'm just going to pull this in just like that. And do you see how that just created all that separation there? And then I'm going to pull these colors together down here. And look how pretty that is. And then I'm going to come back with my darkest color. And I'm going to come in and I'm going to add more of this right where that leaf is because I want to make it known when somebody looks at my coloring page that this leaf here is actually laying to the top of this shingle. 
And when you look at a page, you just have to look at it and be like, okay, well, what is laying to the top? What is laying to the bottom? And how, I'm, how am I going to bring color to this page and be able to achieve that look? So yeah, I thought this was a really great video and I'm gonna add this one to my, um, I think to my tips and tricks series. It's either gonna go with my tips and tricks series or my beginner series. I mean, this really, this one can fit in either one of those places. You know, a lot of you that are following me are beginner colorists and you're working on learning a whole lot of these tips and tricks. And so both of these series are that are um, on my channel, I'm gonna go ahead and link those playlists in the upper right-hand corner so that you can easily find those. But both series, and there's a lot of videos in those series, but both of them are really great for beginners. So if you've not already watched through those, you might wanna go back and watch through those. There's playlists for both of them and I'll make sure that they are both linked. But as I come over here, I'm just looking at this of what I've already created and I'm working on making sure that if I laid a darker color somewhere, I don't go to another section and lay the darker color in the same place. But if you look at these, you can see that the color is just starting to make it look like these shingles are just popping off the page. And you could put together any color combination you'd like to. It's really important to sit there and practice putting together colors. But if you sit there and you practice putting together your colors, it will make it so much easier once you bring those colors to your coloring pages. And planning out your pages ahead of time is so, so important. I've got a lot of people in classes right now that have worked on putting together their color combinations and now we're working on planning out coloring pages and they have constant um, connection with me in between classes. So if they wanna send me what they're working on in between so that I can give them a little bit of guidance and help, they've been doing that. And it's just worked out really, really wonderfully. So I'm gonna come back and I'm just going to lay these colors down again. And you can see that I'm lifting up as I come into where I want to lay that eggshell because again, it, there is a huge difference between that um, crimson lake and this eggshell color. But look how pretty that is. And then you would need to just keep coming back. Now see, I had a lot of the lighter color over here, so I think I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna fix that. And I'm going to make, I'm gonna extend my darker color all the way out this way. And then if you can see, I've got much darker over here and then much lighter over here. So again, I'm creating that separation and I'm trying to make sure each one of these shingles looks a little bit different. You can make sure that some have more highlights than others. And remember, we are coloring like, I don't know, a lot, I know that a lot of you focus on where the light is coming from and where to lay the colors, but we're coloring, like we are colorists. And when you start focusing so much on those things, I think sometimes it sort of takes the joy and the relaxation out of coloring. And a lot of us are coloring, um, you know, for, you know, because we, we have a lot of stress or because we have anxiety. And so we just need to be able to sit down and color and relax and not necessarily sometimes focus on so many of those different things. So you can see when I'm coloring this, I'm not really focusing on where the light is coming from. I'm just focusing on how I want my coloring page to look and creating the depth and the dimension so that it pops off the page and making each one of these have their own separate area so that when somebody looks at my coloring page, they are gonna see that everything looks like it is separated, it is popping off the page, and it has all that depth and that dimension that I'm looking for. And I'm just gonna continue to do that through the entire page. Now see, right here, I probably came down a little bit too low with my darkest color. So unless I wanted to come down here and lay my lightest color, which I probably don't, and I did that on purpose because I wanted to show y'all something. <laughs> So let me show you what I would do in this instance. 
Okay, for something like that, where I came down just a little bit too low, I have my mono eraser. You all know that I absolutely love this thing. But this is perfect for coming in these little, small, small, teeny tiny areas. And I'm just gonna go over that and I'm gonna lift the pigment back off. And it worked out really, really well. See how it just picked that pigment up? And then if I wanted to come back in with my eggshell and lay some of that in there, I could do so. And then I just lightened it right back up. So yeah, no big deal. Every Everything that you do on a coloring page, everything is fixable. So if you do something and you feel like you made a mistake, everything is fixable. I even did a class with somebody like that to where they thought they messed up their coloring page and we went through and we worked on fixing everything and it turned out absolutely beautiful. So there's so much that you could do with colored pencils and they're so much more forgiving than using something like alcohol markers or you know other mediums and the other thing that I have found to be really really forgiving if you're worried about mistakes is um, pastels. When you're using pastels they also just really lift up so if you're working on a background and doing um, some background work, they are really nice to use because you can use a eraser and lift them and they don't really set until you apply a fixative to them. Okay, y'all, so I hope that this short lesson was helpful. I really enjoyed doing this and I just thought that it was just so, so important and I wanted to put this out there because I've just, I've seen so many people struggling with this. I actually, on one of my videos, I was really upset one day because I had somebody come in and leave me a comment on one of my comments color combination videos and it was actually really hurtful because I know a lot of people struggle with putting together color combinations and so I make these videos for that reason and this one was especially important because I wanted to be able to show you one of the color combinations which was this one in the shingles on this roof so that it could just all come together for you so when you come and you you know when you purchase these things in my Etsy shop and you create a whole entire page of color combinations, don't just be creating the color combinations. Work on taking those color combinations and bringing them to your coloring book. But somebody left a comment, something like, gosh, I probably have a copy of it. <laughs> And I should probably just show y'all in the video because I probably cannot remember exactly what was said, but it was something to the effect of, what is the point of this video? Do you honestly think we can't put together a, our color combinations? Do you think that we are dumb? I was just in shock. I could not believe that, that comment. I mean, I get nasty comments like a lot more so lately than I have, I guess, because it's, you know, because my channel has grown so much and so quickly. And so, of course, you know, the haters are going to come <laughs> and I'm kind of learning to deal with that. But I know that these videos are, I mean, these videos are requested over and over. And I responded to that person and I explained to them that I didn't delete their comment. I just explained to them and commented and responded and said, these videos are the most viewed on my channel, the most requested on my channel, and so many people struggle with putting colors together. So, you know, just because you can put colors together and have no problem doing it does not mean somebody that is just finding my channel and they just came into this, um, you know, wonderful hobby, you know, like they're just getting their pencils. They don't understand how to put colors together. So yeah, I was really nice about it and that's how I am to everybody that wants to come to my channel and throw a little bit of hate, but... <laughs> You know, it is what it is. And I just, I really wanted to mention that because I know that these videos are so, so useful. Just because you, or, you know, if you're watching this video, if you don't struggle with this, then move on and go to another one of my other videos or somebody else's videos. But there are a whole lot of beginners in the coloring community that really, really struggle with putting colors together and knowing how to put the right colors together. And that's why I do these videos because I just want these videos out there to help someone. Since doing classes, I have realized even more that there are a lot of you out there that really struggle to put colors together. So I plan to bring lots more of these videos to my channel. And if there is anything that you would like to see, please put it down in the comments below because all of my videos on my channel that I have ever done, they are there because they've been requested. I only do videos that are requested. So if you've asked me to do a video, I usually do put something together and if I've not already put something together, it's on my list for videos to come. So I hope you all have a wonderful day. Everything you've seen in this video will be in the description box below. And I will see you in the next video. Happy coloring. Bye.